In this video, we're going to talk about 6-8 time, what it is, how do you count it, and why does it even exist? All right, before we get going, if you haven't gotten my one-year piano blueprint yet, go ahead and get it. It's free. You can get it at the link below. It will really help you to plan out your yearly piano goals and also to plan out how you're going to reach those goals. Don't wait until January 1st to start your new year in piano. You can start it anytime you want. Also, there is a link down there while you're there anyway to a seven day free trial of a lot of my most popular courses in my All Access Pass membership. So go ahead and click on that and take a look around. See if that's something that's gonna help you reach your piano goals. So when we say six, eight time, we're really talking about the numbers you see at the beginning of a piece of music or at the beginning of a new section of piece of music, of a piece of music, if the timing is gonna change, right? You might be used to seeing four, four or three, four, but for some reason, when people see that eight on the bottom, they freak out and you really shouldn't. It's quite simple. So the time signature is two numbers and they kind of look like a fraction. The top number tells you how many counts are in each measure and the bottom number tells you what kind of note we count as one. So if you're used to seeing like four, four, you know that there's four counts in the measure, that's the top four, and the bottom four tells you that there, a quarter note gets counted as one. So if we look at six, eight, and take what we know from four, four, and just apply it to these, this new set of numbers, we can see there are six counts in each measure, and now instead of a quarter note getting one count, it's an eighth note getting one count. So I'm gonna play the example that you see on the screen without counting, and I just want you to listen to it. Okay? Now, you can see that there are not six notes in each measure because the number six doesn't say there are six notes, it says there are six counts. So looking at the first measure, we only have four notes, right? But look at the first three notes, they are eighth notes. So clearly they get one count each according to the rules of six eight. Now, three eighth notes, one, two, three, if we're counting them as one count each, that leaves us three more counts to fill up in that measure before we move on. So I'm gonna show you how we count this exact thing in six eight time. We've got that one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, the next note is a dotted quarter note. If you know about your note subdivisions, you know that a quarter note is equal to two eighth notes, right? So if a quarter note, quarter note is equal to two eighth notes, what does the dot do? The dot adds half of its value to it. So if this is all like brand new stuff to you, you can watch uh, my piano bootcamp or instant piano, or I also have, yeah, I have rhythm videos here on YouTube. So I'll link those here too. So I don't wanna take up too much time talking about it, but three eighth notes is equal to a dotted quarter note. So the way we count this is one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so if we're counting one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see every single eighth note gets one count. And when we have a dotted quarter note, which is equal to three eighth notes, that gets three counts. I'm gonna show you an example of a Chopin, Chopin piece. It is opus nine, number three. Now you can see here, don't let the you know the number of sharps throw you. <laughs> like I, people, as soon as they see sharps and six, eight, they're like, I'm out of here. No, it's not that confusing, okay? So you see that we have six, eight time. Let's ignore that very first note for a moment. And let's just look at the left hand of the first full measure. You can see we have three, basically three eighth notes if you disregard those upward stems, basically three eighth notes, group of three eighth notes. And the first measure of the left hand sounds like this. Now I'm gonna count that and you can hear each one of those eighth notes gets one count. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
that's pretty straightforward. And if we look at the remainder of what the left hand is doing, it's just basically playing on each of those six beats of the measure. Now the right hand, I chose this piece for a reason because the right hand has some subdivisions of those eighth notes, which we can talk about. Again, let's ignore that very first note. We see that in the first full measure, we've got a note on beat one. Then we have a 16th rest and a 16th note, and then a note on beat three. So the way we would count it, don't worry about, uh, you know, don't worry about how it looks. It's really quite simple. A 16th note, note or a 16th rest is half as long as an eighth note. So if I count like this, one and two and three and two and three and okay it's not that confusing one and two and three and moving on four and five and six and right so you see the same rhythm rhythm pattern is happening in the first half of the beat and in the second half of the beat that very first note of the piece is called a pickup note or an upbeat it's just basically count six of the previous measure so Six, one, two, and three, four, five, and six. Now you'll see the next measure has that dotted quarter note that we talked about earlier. So that's going to be three counts. One, two, three. It's tied to an eighth note, so we don't play it. Four, five, six. Looking at the third full measure, we have a note on beat one. One. A note on beat two, but this one is a dotted eighth note. So it looks like this, or it sounds like this. One, two, three, and. One, two, three, and. One, two, three, and one. So we have a note on beat one, a note on beat two, and then we have that dot on beat three. So then that F sharp comes in on the end of three. We have a note on beat four, a note on beat five. We have the dot on beat six, and then that E sharp on the end of six. So all together, I'm gonna play that for you. Six, one, two, and three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, and four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, any questions so far? <laughs> okay, why not just call it three, four? I'm going to get to that in just a second, Jan. You're following so far, Diane. Good. Yeah, I'm going to get to, that's a great question, and I'm going to answer you in a minute. Okay, so now that you have a good introduction to what 6-8 is, let's get more into the details of why do we even use it, or what's going on here, okay? When you're looking at the screen, you can see that we are, we have two, kind of two groupings of eighth notes and each group has three counts in it. It's really easy to see here in the left hand of the Chopin, right? So we've got one group here, that's the end of that group, and the way I know it's a group, I'm looking at the beams. You see the first three notes are beamed together and then the next three notes are beamed together. So we look at them as like two groups inside the measure, right? We're doing that because we have basically two beats in the measure, but each beat is split up into three parts. So we have two big beats in the measure and each one is split up into three parts. So we actually have a name for that in music. It's called compound duple meter. Duple means there are two chunks, two groups in the measure. And compound means that each group or each chunk of notes, yeah, each group, each big beat is split up into three parts. So one, two, there's two chunks, 
each chunk is split up into three notes. So we call that compound duple meter. Now, if we talk about 3-4, what is the difference between 6-8 and 3-4? Why can't we just call it 3-4? You'll see in just a second. So here you can see one example is 6-8 and the other is 3-4. Each of those measures has six eighth notes in it. But I hope what's jumping out at you right now is how those eighth notes are grouped together with the beams. So in 6-8, we've got two groups right? And each group has three notes in it. In 3-4, we have three groups and each group has two notes in it. Let me play and count the first measure. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do you hear how I kind of accented the one and the four? There's two strong beats in that measure. Granted, the first one is stronger than the, the fourth beat, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm going to play and count the three, four measure. One and two and three and one and two and three and. You can see that the three, four, the measure in three, four, has three groupings of eighth notes, and each grouping has two eighth notes in it. And the accent is on beat one, that's the strong beat, and not on two and three. One and two and three and one and two and three and. Because there are three groups in three, four time, we call it triple meter instead of duple meter. And because each of those groups is split up into two, we call it simple triple meter. You do not need to know that by the way. It's just like if you, you know, want to understand what's happening. We have names for all this stuff. So 6-8 versus 3-4. If I play for you a waltz. Do you hear how the strong accent is on one? One, one, and the two, three is are not strong. If I count that with six, with eighth notes, one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three. You hear that one gets that mm, that lean into. Well, we don't have that in six eight because in six eight the uh, strong beats are the one and the four. One, two, three, four, five, six as opposed to one, two, three, one, two, three. So you might say this is just like a mathematical uh, issue. They both kind of sound the same. Uh, not really. If I play for you a song, let's do We Are the Champions by Queen. It's in six, eight. Sing it. We, oh, sorry. We are the champions. You see where I'm leaning into it? We are the champions, my friends. I'm doing this with my head so you can hear where the, the beats are. One, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bum, 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 bum. That is definitely not in three, four time. We, we are the, that sounds weird, doesn't it? One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. It doesn't, you, it doesn't fit. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. Regina, you were doing um, Hallelujah. Um, Okay, 
Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. You can hear the leaning into the one and beat four. Where if I play a waltz, a three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Right? So it's the priority of where is the beat placed. It's like the feel of the song. Some people say that 6 8 kind of sounds like a rocking motion. And if you think about, you know, we are the champions or even hallelujah, you know, just kind of like rock from side to side. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. And in a waltz, you don't rock from side to side. You go bum, 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 bum. Does that make sense? So three, four, and six, eight, even though mathematically they kind of come out even, the feel is totally different. Sometimes in six, eight, you won't count one, two, three, four, five, six. You might count one and a two and a one and a two and a. Um, and that's basically because we're, um, we're referencing the strong beats, the one, two, three, four, five, six. It's like, one and a two and a, right? So if you see somebody counting six, eight, like one and a two and a, it's not wrong at all. Anyway, you can count them both ways. Six, eight is one, two, three, four, five, six, and one and a two and a, both ways are fine. So that's six, eight time. Six counts in each measure and an eighth note gets counted as one. The way it's different from three, four time is where we put the accents. The way you get good at anything is that you practice it with intention and you practice it in a way that actually produces results, right? You don't just keep hammering away at it, hoping at some point it's going to make sense. You want to understand what you're doing. And if 6-8 scares you, it's probably because you haven't spent a whole lot of time counting and playing it, right? Taking it apart. If you can play in 3-4 or 4-4, you can for sure play in 6-8. The subdivisions of the notes don't change. So two eighth notes are still equal to a quarter note. Three eighth notes are still equal to a dotted quarter note. And that hasn't changed, right? All we're doing is counting them differently. That's it. Now, if you want to learn more about rhythm and music, check out these videos next. Keep practicing, have fun, and I'll see you soon.